Welcome to Screen Riot, the show where we let fate choose the movie we review. This week's movie is 2015's romance, Brooklyn. Obviously, this episode will contain major spoilers, so if you don't have the movie, it's available to rent or buy on iTunes, Google Play, Amazon Prime, and more for $2.99. So go check it out and come back to the podcast because this is Screen Riot. Welcome back to another great episode of Screen Riots. Yeah. So this week's Kyle, we landed on you, <laughs> and uh, it was your genre was romance, I believe, right? Correct. Uh, and your chosen film was what? Brooklyn. Yeah, from 2015. Yes. And it stars. How do you pronounce her name? I can never. Saoirse. Saoirse. Uh, what? Saoirse. Saoirse. Yeah. Saoirse, Saoirse Ronan. Saoirse like inertia. Oh, okay. Oh, you're talking about the actual actresses? Name. Yes, yeah, because yeah, I, I can Saoirse never. Saoirse Ronan. Uh, I gotcha. Yeah, and some other people. <laughs> well, it's got Nora Jean Noon in it, which I like. Nora Jean Noon. She's a she's a very yes. pretty, pretty Irish actress. Um, yes, I like her. She was in The Descent and The Magdalene Sisters. And oh, that's show. right, The yeah. Descent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I like her. So, so we want to give a quick synopsis of uh, what Brooklyn is all about. Uh, yeah, sure. It's a uh, it's an Irish immigrant that lands in 1950s Brooklyn, where she quickly falls in love with a uh, with a romance or into a romance with a local, and her past catches up with her. However, when she must choose between two countries and the lives that exist within, right? Mm. So there's a love triangle in this movie, obviously. Mm. Yes, there is Eddie. <laughs> so there let's, are, let's go with Eddie. There <laughs> are there are That's two arguable. guys and one female. And yeah. she must choose between the two. It is a that is a definition. Very Listen, I'm gonna, staple of a love triangle. I'm gonna wait. <laughs> I'm gonna wait to jump into this, but I, I have some things. I have some. I have some points. But let's let's talk about the good things about the movie first. Yeah. Right. Like the poop scene. It's a period. Uh, well, it's a period. It's a period movie, right? Like right. It, they made it. Uh, you know, it's supposed to be the 1950s. I think they did a really good job of that. Mm -hmm. Like I think the the movie overall has a nice look. Um, I like the uh, the muted tones that they used throughout the movie. They right. didn't go with like super bright colors and made it look like a TV movie. Right. It's, it's shot really well. The um, cinematography is pretty spot on. I thought it was I thought it was really good. Like in in a lot of ways, I thought it was a good movie. You and I, I mean? think there's no scene that's shot in New York. Seriously, really? It's probably all. I would it's imagine all, it's all Toronto. It's all UK, uh, Canada, and Ireland. Yeah, because at the very at the yeah. opening credits, there's a Toronto Film Company or something. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. Hmm. That's listed a production company in uh, 2015. Yeah, so there's a lot of film productions that moved to Toronto to Seattle yes. or not Seattle, um, uh, Canada. Yeah, I'm trying to think of the actual. The city in oh. Toronto, Vancouver. Stereo. Yeah, Vancouver. Oh, yeah, okay. um, and a couple other cities. Nova there. Scotia. Yeah, no, no? <laughs> yeah. okay, right. <laughs> but the, but they shoot a lot of places that are supposed to look like New York uh, uh, and stuff like that in there because there, they, there's some areas in there that look in there and they get a lot better tax uh, yeah. tax credits and stuff. Oh, do they? They can, they can shoot it up there. there. They can shoot it there a lot cheaper. Too. Right, a lot yeah. cheaper. That's saying a lot. When Canada, who has insane levels of tax, can shoot, they can shoot cheaper in Canada <laughs> yeah. than they can in New York. City. There's a there's a video uh, I need to show you guys. There's significantly a, less people. Yeah, no, that's as, no. as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I have to I have to find it, but it's kind of cool. They take um they take like a bunch of movies in the last decade, mm -hmm. and they show you you know they do like a side by side of like where in Canada it was shot and like the where it's supposed to be where it is in, in the movie on you know like dead on in there, it's, it's dead on wow yeah, yeah cuz i didn't realize it wasn't new york to be honest i'd, I'd say like 80% <laughs> wow yeah cuz if you notice a lot of the scenes that you see that's supposed to be in brooklyn mm -hmm. are very tight shots that's true because the only the only scene that you really see of new york is like towards the beginning and kind of the end where they're looking out from the from ellis island yes and you're seeing like the the landscape or the the cityscape of yeah. new york which has to be 1950s New York because there's a crap ton of movie or uh, buildings that haven't been erected yet. Yes, right. you know, so that's the only ones that are, I guess, fake. I don't know if they used real footage, like archival footage or anything I don't know. for that, or, or I'm what, not sure. but or if they made it themselves. Well, I'll tell you that like, I think it worked in their favor because that t the one thing I liked about this movie too was that they didn't seem to like. Typically, what I want is they I want them to actually build out a world, right? Right. But in this, they built out the world, but they didn't build it too much. They, right. they, they kept the story pretty localized to to her, right? Yeah. 
So in doing that, they didn't have to go like, well, here's where she went when she walked down the street to, you know, to Central Park and blah, blah, blah. Like, it, it, she kept it fairly small. And like, they didn't they actually small, make it so. to where the city was like, it wasn't like a, a story of big city, small girl, no. or, you know, yeah. something like that. Small yeah. Irish girl in yeah. a big city. Yeah, so uh, the city of Brooklyn, New York, in this movie was actually shot in Montreal, Quebec. Montreal, okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, for budgeting reasons, as the production was unable to turn 2015 Brooklyn back into 1950s Brooklyn. Uh, and only two days of production were spent in Brooklyn, okay. the actual Brooklyn. Wow. Uh, one in order to create the brownstone exterior shots and a second to film at Coney Island. Okay. Mm. So out of all the stuff in Brooklyn, only two shots. Wow. Were in actual Brooklyn. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. I the could, rest were all in. I can understand Montreal. Coney Island mm-hmm. being shot in Coney Island, Coney Island. Yeah. Or on at, at Coney Island because it's very iconic. Mm. Yeah. I don't know. I, I like that. I like the the that they kept the story tight. That they kept it pretty much to her. Um, well, and then they did a good job because you didn't realize it. Right. Well, as far as building out from from it not being New York. Yeah. Yeah. I, I typically don't pay that close attention uh-huh. to the to the city like that. I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, it was it just looked like a big city to me. I. I zone out like uh if you were to tell me oh no that was shot in chicago versus new york i don't give a shit about the uh, landmarks enough to really <laughs> it's like know. the architecture is right. kind of the same anyway. yeah unless you show me like the giant bowl which is uh new york right wall street the giant bowl or the bowl. chicago yes. tool okay. i thought you said no. bowl no bowl the like bowl. the wall street bowl that's yeah. the wall street, the wall street bowl, bowl. Yeah. yeah then i'd maybe be able to pick it out which obviously maybe not because i'm not sure which city it's in now currently um and then <laughs> you york. have uh i don't know you have a couple of those big like really obvious things like you know the statue of liberty i might be able to guess is in new york um but other than that i don't i don't really care right. like when people are like oh look there was the brownstones that were erected in 19 19- i don't give a shit <laughs> like i don't you can stop you're not there. an architect even if i was i i just don't i don't idolize new york and chicago and la i don't get i don't care when people are like oh she's moving to la i'm like oh so she's gonna become a pretentious bitch then like i don't care like i just it doesn't mean anything to me right you know like oh that's cool so she's gonna learn how to be stuck up her own ass that's awesome you know i just that would be kind of care. interesting if if the story was instead of brooklyn like la la well, she know? started to act like that in the movie Eilish started to act like that a little bit. Like when she's walking around at the towards the end, she's walking around her little town of uh, Einkelhorn or fin- Finkel is Einkelhorn, whatever the name of the town is. Uh, she's wearing the sunglasses and stuff. And the, the ladies who are walking by even make a comment. They're like, oh, she's like a movie star, you know, et cetera. She starts to get a little pretentious, little, little pretentious, little high, little highfalutin, but not enough to be annoying. <laughs> right. You know yeah. what I mean? Like she, she never annoyed me in the movie, which was nice. Well, I can't say that. There is something she does that annoyed me, which is where the argument will come in we'll, here we'll get soon. To that. So we'll, we'll start <laughs> off with, basically, she lives in this ir- this Irish town, which... What's very, it's called? What? But yeah. I very don't. small Irish town. Let me... Let yeah, me if we it. could find that out. Um, Eyes Gruber. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> Eyes <no>. Gruber. <laughs> Fusfrada. Um, she's living in this Irish town. Basically, she's unhappy right yeah, yeah she yeah. she doesn't like where she yeah. works her sister yeah, she works for a lady named miss kelly who's yeah. a Ugh. bitch who's a bitch. Yeah. Hey, Woo! Sure. she gets uh her sister ends up helping her though um by talking to the catholic church and they she finds somebody in new york who helps people come to new york etc the, the father yeah so she talks to him and the sister talks to him and gets um help for Island. passage to that's important, by the way, for my point coming up here a little bit later. Not the uh, romance aspect, but from a different topic. Um, it's important to note that Eilish wasn't the one who actually sought Eilish. going to New York. Eilish, Eilish wasn't the yeah. one who uh, sought going to New York. Right. So It was yeah. her sister's doing. Yeah. The, the town in Ireland is uh, Anis Corthy? Anis Corthy? It's E N N I S C O R T H Y. Ah, Anis Corthy. You got to say it with the Irish accent. Anis Corthy. Ah, I do, I do, I yeah. <laughs> I could do it. Just give me a Guinness. Yeah, right. And then I'll. <laughs> and then you'll think that you. It's yeah, that's basically like it doesn't ex- matter what you guys hear. It's ex- just what I hear. Expectations <laughs> versus reality. Yes. Yeah. That's a. Good it's God. a. It's a perfect uh, rendition of that. Um. So yeah. So then we get a. Uh, probably one of the the better scenes in the movie to me when she meets that person who has gone over multiple times and yeah. she gets um kind of lessened i guess yeah, yeah that's after she um shits on a bucket uh getting sick on the on the boat um yeah <laughs> after yeah. after that well scene, i thought that was that before was she meets her briefly before but yeah. they don't really talk they don't really talk until after the only she's the only time that they talk is when they first get into the or she the blonde chick gets into the room and she is like that's mine oh no <laughs> she kicks her oh, off yeah the bed. yeah that and and she was like <laughs> yeah well this sucks you know like this yeah. this is great and and she's like, "Oh, are you going to 
are you, are you going to New York, you know, for the first time and, or, or something like that? And she's yeah. like, hell yeah, I'm going for good. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm leaving this shithole. <laughs> it's yeah. like, I'm not, there's my problem. The, my, my main problem was coming back. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I just didn't want to come back, which is which kind is of, kind of foreshadowing, foreshadowing, you know, the future. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. journey. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but she, yeah, she basically says, "Well, I'm a veteran at this. Don't, don't eat. Don't, you know, you'll yeah. get sick." Blah, blah, blah. And then we get the infamous, um, the the toilet scene. The toilet yeah, the scene. toilet scene. No, that was <laughs> again. That was before that little speech you're talking about. Oh, with okay. the don't eat I could have swore it was before. No, it, no, it, was, it was after. It was, well, the the scene where basically she was it, they smash cuts from that little scene on like, Hey, I'm, I'm going to find somebody in first class first. Yes. It smash cuts it to, uh, Ailish in the dining hall, dining hall. It's right. eating the actual <laughs> stew. Mutton, the mutton, mutton stew. stew. Mutton, mutton yeah. stew. Ooh. It That's just, an Irish it, food. It looked gross on the plate. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'd eat it. It's leads and I eat it, but not on a ship, not on a ship. <laughs> and it's like, I would, I'd be very worried. It's like, or hang on. Why I'm isn't saying. anybody else eating on? There's this nobody ship? even in there. It's like, I'm looking around like, yeah, wait, this is bad. Well, because it was going to be bad. It was going to be stormy, <laughs> and everyone else was trying not to get sick. It made sense, but it was just it showed her um, her naivete. Yeah, her her, 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 her yeah, lack of na- um, naivete. Naivete, whatever. Her I, I don't even think it was. I don't think it was not her being naive. I was thinking her just didn't know. Just lack of that's naive. That's what night. Yeah. No. <laughs> you don't think that's naive though. No, I don't. I don't think that that would be naive. Whenever I always look at naive. Whereas, um, you know, like like you three try to, you know, you three send me snipe hunting, right? Okay. You're right. There's no such thing. I'm being naive. But if I'm by myself and I just don't know, I just well, don't know. I'm not a traveled person. Okay. So I see where you're going I, with it. She just doesn't. So you're just basically saying she she's legitimately not, does not. Right. Know. She doesn't have okay. people like egging her on going, yeah, you, yeah eat, go ahead. I see what you're saying. <laughs> you yeah, yeah. Okay. I could take that. Yeah, she, uh, I don't know, when she gets sick, I think it's, I thought it was kind of comical. I laughed. I mean, there was quite a few times in the movie I laughed out loud. Like, um, when she finally makes it to New York and she goes to live with, uh, I forget the woman's name, the boarding house. Miss Kehoe. There yes, you go, Miss Kehoe. Miss Kehoe. Who Those, I think is the, she's my favorite character in the whole movie. She's definitely the comedic relief, I, I, for sure. I loved her. She was awesome. She's not my favorite character in the whole movie, but I do like those dinner table uh, talks that they're all yeah. having. I like those a lot. That to me was, was very real. It felt like they actually had a good time making those scenes. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? And I was like, and I'm kind of wondering, you know, my <laughs> wife and I were like, I wonder if they've ad libbed some of those. I think so. Probably. Because yeah. with the, with the two girls that always sit on like when the, on her the, right, on the left or yeah, or to, to right of Keo. Yeah. They're always giddy. The giddy girls, Yeah, you know, that, <laughs> that is, their reactions or their laughter is so honest and true mm-hmm. that it's like they have to be having fun and laughing about you know crap that's going off set or something like that. I think so. Well, too. and there and there was one shot where Miss Kehoe actually started laughing. I don't think that was scripted. Yeah, right. Because that looked like an authentic like I'm gonna laugh, but wait, I gotta stay character. Yeah, yeah. I gotta get back. <laughs> well, the thing I liked about her too was uh, she seemed she seemed like she was gonna be a Ma Kelly. Um, you know, character like, like right. Kelly was uh, back in Ireland. Yeah. And then she didn't turn into that person, which I appreciated. Like, you know, the bitchy um, boarding was, lady is, is really, really obvious. Like that's a, a pretty known trope. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, a pretty yeah. known trope. So she I mean, was stern and she had her expectations, but she, yeah, she wasn't crazy. She, she obviously loved the girls that live there. Yeah. Which I appreciated. Um, when Miss McAdams leaves and uh, Dolores, I think's her name, the, the the blonde with the crazy hair, comes to live with us. <laughs> the, yeah, I just yeah. call her the bird. So she was, um, she's a strange character to me. I, yes. I couldn't, I, I don't understand why that character was there. I don't either. It, I, I think it was, um, I basically, I think it was basically the, um, when she goes to the dance yep. with Eilish. Mm-hmm. Um, she's, that, a, she's an excuse. Well, that and I think it shows that it's like she's not the newbie anymore. Like it shows Maybe. that Ailish isn't the new newbie anymore. It's like it's yeah. and it, it, it's she's basically progressing in the ranks in the boarding house. I guess I don't know. I I didn't get it that way. I, go ahead. John. I I, th- I think it just shows that that uh, when a girl leaves, another one comes in. So this yeah. is just a normal rotation. I don't that type, type thing for yeah. this boarding house. Like like people are coming to America this often right. that this boarding house is always full. See, I had a different thought about it. 
because my my issue wasn't so much that because I, I agree with you on that. Well, I didn't like, have an issue with it. Well, that's just... fine. That I agree with that that people just come and go. I totally get that. But I meant at the dance in particular, mm-hmm. she was used as a device right. when she was at the dance because Ailish had Ailish just left with Frankie, she might have been seen as being a whore. Right. There's a, there's a slutty element to that, especially in the 1950s. Like, oh, you're leaving with some guy. Like, but why? Right. And because she's like, well, no, I'm going to walk home and you're going to leave with me. And that way, Dolores will understand. It almost becomes like a she's she's not leaving with Frankie. So you don't think that she's just going to, like, you know, get laid, per se. She's leaving with him to avoid being with Dolores at right. that point. Right. Do you know what I mean? So it's kind of this. I, I don't know. She she just felt, she felt like a a thrown in character um, in the you're grand talking, scheme of things. You're talking about Tony, not Frankie. Tony, my fault. Yeah, Tony. Tony. What okay. I say, Frankie, yeah. my fault. Tony. Well, and I and I think too, it shows it shows that Ailish is changing. Yeah. You know, before she would have just done what Miss Kehoe told her to do, mm-hmm. and went in and sat with the the girl, and not if the girl didn't dance, then yeah. she wouldn't dance. You know, and all that stuff. But since she is changing. She's she's becoming her own person, and she's like, I don't want to be to be held back yeah. by by other by other people who are in, in authority of me. So, talking about right. the changing in particular, did you guys see this as a as a coming of age movie? A little bit. It's very similar to a coming of age. It's, movie. I could see that more I, not necessarily I, coming. Of I age, I, but... I listed it. Um, I in my head I listed it as a uh, coming out of your shell. Yeah, movie. I can see that. I think it's actually a coming of age movie, though. And here's why I say that: up until she confronts Ma Kelly, every decision is made by somebody else. There's almost no decisions that she makes in that movie on her own. Almost every decision mm. is made by somebody else. Well, yeah, the bathing and suit she ends up choosing is is chosen. Even the bathing suit is chosen by the woman who runs that, that department store. It's that level of other people are making decisions for her. I mean, she she chose to to give Tony a second date or whatever right they have that conversation yeah no she has little tiny little things like that but i'm saying in terms of like for instance going back to uh to america right she she chooses to buy that that um ticket and all that kind of stuff all those things are leading up to she's going to start making more decisions as a woman but we don't actually see her well like if you look at her on the boat talking to the the at the end looking at um, talking to the girl who's going over is basically the new alish yeah um she's a completely different person than she was prior to that conversation with ma kelly Right. Well, she's yeah. Right. She's more learned. She's more yeah experienced. E- e- and... But up until that point, even working at the uh, the the accounting office, the not accounting office, but the in the accounting office, the one Rose worked at. Right. Yeah. She didn't even want that fucking job. No. Well, <laughs> well, that goes when when she comes back to uh, Ireland. Yes. She immediately goes back into her shell. Of I got to oh, listen to my yeah. mother. I got to listen to the people who are who are who are in in authority. I've got the, the I am no longer out of out. I'm no longer me. I have to go b- retreat back to where how yeah. how I was, and that's what and that's what people who have who have that's what a lot of people who have suffered um, a uh, a uh, strict upbringing yeah. do when they're around their when they're around their parents when they're around other family members when they're around people mm-hmm. of authority they immediately shrink down and just okay just do whatever yeah you'll yeah you'll notice at the very like the first half, like when when she gets to New York, yeah, she starts to break out of that shell and starts to make decisions on her own and starts to become her own what person. Decisions, quote, unquote, what decisions unquote. did she make on her own? The whole relationship with Tony. See, I, I look at that differently. Like even the the relationship with Tony. Yes, she was making a little bit of the decision to be with him and all that. I'm not saying that, but even the wedding, even the marriage. I mean, she really didn't. She really didn't want to marry him. There's only two ways, and that, that leads to my second issue with the, with that movie is um, the romance aspect of it. And we'll talk about that. I'm going to go into it. But but if there's only two ways really that that could be played out, and if if in the one way she wanted to marry him, then the decision she makes later on makes no sense. If she didn't want to marry him, then he was the one that made that decision. And I'm looking at like for instance when she's um, learning how to use mascara or lipstick and all that shit. That's other people showing her how to do it the whole time. The the father enrolls her in night school. She doesn't. She doesn't look into going to night school. She doesn't look into going into accounting. He he just enrolls her. In right. it. Now she does well in it and she continues well, on she, with that. She that does choice. want to become an accountant though. That's fine. But she that, doesn't tell that, was, that to anybody that was, else. Well, that was prior to but well, because she actually told it to her sister. Yep. Which then actually had uh the father in there. Father Flood. Yeah, pay for classes. Father Flood, is that his name? Okay. Yeah. 
No, that's fine, but she doesn't make that decision. But, but, it's but made what for you're her. but what you're saying, what you what, what you're going through, is all in the process of her learning to come out of her shell and to be yeah, her she, own person. Yeah, and to be her own person. She didn't no, no. know. She you got, you, this girl's what twenty. I'm going to say 20, 20. We we said between twenty and twenty four. Yeah, yeah. Twenty twenty four around yeah. in there. So yeah. for for twenty to say twenty two years. Yeah. She's done nothing but what everybody else has told her to do, and she doesn't know how to do anything. I agree. Else. Mainly, no, no. mainly her mother. So, so, but, but, but that, <laughs> and, and it's so, so what you're, what, what you're saying is, what you're seeing is, yeah, she didn't make any decisions, but she's progressing toward that throughout no, no. the entire movie. I agree with you. That's why I'm saying, to me, it's a coming of age. Like when she hits Ma Kelly, whenever she Miss actually Kelly. Miss Kelly, whenever, well, they call her Ma Kelly at the beginning as a joke. Yeah. It was like a shitty little comment, so it doesn't yeah. matter. Miss Kelly. Kelly. When she tells off Miss Kelly and she's like, you know, what did you really think was going to happen here? You know, did you think I was that you're going to stop me from going back or some shitty it's just some shitty things that that Miss Kelly says to her. That's whenever we actually see her become a realized person, a full-fledged person who now makes her own decisions. And right. in this case makes the decision to go back to Tony even though just she just spent the last 45 minutes cheating on him. But let's not talk about that yet. So she didn't cheat, she didn't on, cheat on it. It's him. the same thing. No, no it's, it's not. not. We're going into it. Don't okay, worry. Okay, go ahead. Okay, fine. Um, <laughs> if I'm going to ask you this, John. If your wife did what that woman did, so let's say your wife goes to another, where, where, where is she originally from? Like, uh, is she from Florida or is she from somewhere else originally? No, she's from Florida. Okay. And, and let me bring this in real quick because yeah. you're bringing in everybody else's relationships. Yes. And you've only known this person for maybe a year. Not even a year. Doesn't Go. matter. Go. Okay. So you've only known this person for a year. You get married to this person. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it's not just some girlfriend. It's not even your fiance. It's your wife. That in Alish's eyes is just basically a glorified promise. Go ahead. Okay. Well, in that case, she shouldn't have done it. If she's misrealized, if she's miss, I can make my no. own decision, then she no, shouldn't have gotten not, married. She's not it, quite she's there not. <laughs> She likely. shouldn't have gotten no. married then. I agree. I agree with you. She yeah. shouldn't have gotten married. Yep. But when she goes back to Ireland, as mm-hmm. I've said at least twice now, yep. she reverts back to her old self. So when her mother tells her yep. that she needs to go here and we've already arranged this, yeah. she doesn't know that she's married. Yeah. And she she's afraid to tell her. Yes. Right? So she she doesn't tell her. So okay, I gotta I got to I gotta do this now. Yes. Right, so she just she just keeps going with it. No, no, she has so, no choice so in her I'm, mind. I'm with you on that. I'm with you on that. Here's the difference, though. Here's the difference. So let's just use let's use your wife for a second again. Your wife goes somewhere and decides to start talking to some guy because her in laws don't know that you two are married. Mm-hmm. Okay, her her, 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 parents. her parents don't know that you two are married. Mm-hmm. Now that's fine. Her parents say, "Hey, we want you to go to dinner with this guy. No big deal, right? You go." It's a, it's a normal conversation. Hey, it was very nice. Thank you very much for having me. I'm just going to go back to my house now. She doesn't do that. What she does is she allows Nancy, her friend, to bring that guy the first time. Had it been just the first time, I no, wouldn't be saying it's, this. It's not just Nancy. It's it's a whole pre-planned thing with Nancy, her mom, and uh, the the dude's parents. Yeah. They've all agreed. Everybody doesn't matter. To keep everybody her there. wants Hold her on. to get. Yes. Or everybody wants them to get together. Yes, they've they lassoed her exactly. And <laughs> yeah. and you got. You, <laughs> it's a psychological her thing with her, dude. It's not that she can't. She 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 wants to get out, but I but she ends up getting. Uh, brainwashed in a sense. Yeah. Well, okay. I didn't see brainwashed at all. What well, I saw was her I, making I do, decisions. You, you know, you know what it is. I, I, I've refrained from saying this, but what it is is it's abuse. It's okay. a, it's Pretty a form much. of abuse. That her entire life she's been she's been basically you're, you're going to do whatever you're told. Okay. You're going to work for this witch of a lady that I guarantee you, mom got her the job there. But I think it was the sister, you know, or, the, the, or sister, the sister, the sister. So, though, but, I mean, to me, it's just it's just mental abuse. And when you when you go back into an abusive situation, you a lot of folks tend to go right back to their old ways, and that's what I see happening here. And since uh, the, her sister just died, that now she is the only daughter. Yeah, yeah, she so, feels vulnerable. Right now, she's she's like, well, crap. Now I have to fill in my older sister's shoes. Mm-hmm. Now I have to actually work in her job. Now I have to actually listen to my mother because. Now the the um, the oldest sister was basically, uh, you know, right really close to the mom. Yes. So now she's going to be like, crap. Now I have to actually fill that role. I, again, I didn't see any of that on screen. What I saw was her not like, for instance, going back to work at the accounting place with Rose. She didn't even want to go. 
Whenever she right. starts, she's like, I'll just, I'll go whenever I get a chance. But it's did obvious. she go? Hold on a second. Because <laughs> she was I'm, forced. I'm, yeah, I, I get it. She wasn't forced. Yes, she was. Yes, she, was. No, she wasn't forced. The oh, mom okay. said, go now. Yeah, She go. doesn't have to go. She doesn't, but she's under the thumb of her mother you right don't, now. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're not, you're, I, I, I don't think you're understanding the power that, that that an entire life of no, of, I get of it. abuse, but I mean, but I mean, you're 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 not giving the girl any type of any type of leeway whatsoever. You're saying she's a whore, and that's it. And I didn't I'd, say she was a whore. I never said she was a whore. Okay, prior to the show, <laughs> you said she was a whore. I said whoreish, <laughs> whore-ish. because now it's. I'll yeah. give you a great example. If my wife, if my wife left and went to to some place, and I found out later that she was. She went to dinner with some guy and a friend. That's not a big deal. I can handle that. Hey, my friend didn't know that me and you were together. We got, you know, we, we went to dinner together. I could totally handle that. Mm-hmm. But then later on, I find out you guys go to the beach with the friend. And then after that day, you guys go back again for a nice together walk down the beach. And oh, all the letters I've been writing to you, you've been putting in this drawer and not even opening, just putting in this drawer and, and hiding away and trying to decide whether or not you want to be with me. Well, mm-hmm. fuck it. I'll make it easy for you. We're not together. Well, you're also not in the 1950s. You're right, and you're also, also not an Irish immigrant. And also, Tony also, doesn't know. Tony I will mean, never even know. You're about also this. not a lot of things. You're right, right? but Tony, but you don't know that because you didn't see it on the screen. You don't know she didn't go back and tell him everything. Well, we're gonna assume because there's no way that it's not supported in any way that she tells him what took place. No, had she told him, do you think that Tony, 1950s Italian guy Tony, is gonna accept what just took place in Ireland? No, I, because what she would say is be like, hey, look. If you ever hear anything, it was because my mother and everybody else prearranged everything that was going on, mm-hmm. and I had to pretty much save face to pretty much keep everybody in 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 line. But that's not what took place. That's a lie. No, it's that's not. That's not true. Okay, so they pre they preordained that she was going to accept a, a walking down the beach alone together with Jim. No, she was going to accept a prearranged marriage. This this whole this whole thing with uh, Jim, uh, yeah, it was all prearranged. This this was destined to happen that they were supposed to be married. It was basically like written in a in a secret contract. Since when? Since the parents and actually the parents are leaving. Yes. Right. That I know. The mother of of uh, Ailish. Yes. It's like oh well they're they're leaving so there's that big old house that he's going to be all alone in. See, you guys are coming it's, up with this this arrangement between the parents. When do we ever see that? I when does that get, ever get yeah, said? I didn't get that. It, it's said. It's it's kind of yeah. subtle, but it, it's, it's, subtle. it's in there. They, they don't they don't go. Okay, this is how the movie is going to be, folks. <laughs> We're going to do this. They no, didn't but do there's, that. But there's but no connection that that shows that those two sets of parents so when, ever talk. Okay, so hear me out on this one. I'm listening. So I'm when they listening. when they left uh, Mass, and this the was old. like the first time the Mass ended, and she's back in Ireland. It's basically the first scene that she's back in Ireland. Okay, so right. the one where she pulls the black yes. thing off her head? And she first sees her friend that's Nancy. getting engaged, yes. or that is engaged, Yeah, right? So she, the mother already knew everything that was going to go on. She Because she, she said that um, uh, something like, oh, you need to you need to come with us or you know hang out with us or something like that. And, mm-hmm. and she was like, oh, yeah, you know, I, I knew that was going to happen here. You know, that I, I'm allowing you to go with your friends. And she knew that that the girl is marrying uh, one of the uh, what is the f- f- uh, rugby. rugby the rugby, rugby club, club yeah members, and they already had a pass. Her and Jim already had a pass because because every single time that the rugby players were at the dance hall, yeah, they're all together. No, that's so true. everybody knows each other. They've pretty much grown up with each other in the same because they're in the same town. Absolutely, they know of but each the, other. But the last time Eilish was there. She, uh, he was engaged to somebody else. Right. Right. He was supposed to marry somebody else and that right. fell through. Right. So they, they didn't have any pasts back then other than they grew up in the same town. Well, coincidence. Hey, Ailish is back. Cool. Slip right <laughs> in. I mean, some random old lady was talking about <laughs> how they're Byrne. getting together. Yeah. yeah. And, and yeah, just, and but that's stuff. after, but that's after so, they spent all this time together. No, it wasn't. It was after their, I was after their very first initial. No, it, no, it was, it was after the wedding. That was right before. It was after her friend's wedding. Yeah. That's right, right. But she didn't go to the wedding with him. 
Yes, she did. She, she did. Yeah. Oh, did she? Yeah, yeah. because she he, he's the one who runs ahead and gets them a good seat yeah, at the wedding. Right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But but All the, that took but place, the whole yeah. oh Jim and I, Jim and I, you know thing. How how great is that sound? It's again, another it's another push down on the thumb on, well, from the thumb. Of, but hold on, but that, you need to actually conform. But that's no, it's not. That's proving that my point that she's spending so much time with this guy who is not her husband, and the only person who's going to know it's not her husband is her. Huh. I mean, it's like saying that she has no no. No uh, control over her own fidelity. So you think that her, like a, her, a- Alish's character is like, is it kind of personally? It's 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 actually got a personal effect on you because you, in 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 your own mind, wouldn't ever do this, and I don't think I, I wouldn't even do this. Yeah, you know, I I honestly, if I was in Tony's position, I wouldn't even actually force her to marry me. I'd be like, yeah, you know what, your sister just died. You need to go back to Ireland go well you but you'd be more aware than he is of the the situation yeah Yeah. but i mean again we're dealing with very very young people again like it's like they're like 19 20 years old you know it's no no i'm with you i i I think damn young i think that if tony had been more aware of the situation and more aware of what she was saying they wouldn't be in the situation and in a way too i guess tony i don't know like when he was when he him and her were in the park and he was like marry me just, just marry me. Just, just say it. Just, just do it. I'm thinking, ah, oh, it's a little bit of Ireland coming back. Of just conform. Just do it. Yeah. Just, sit, just do it because I say so. And she's like, ah, oh, okay, fine. Mm-hmm. You know, if if it's gonna make you happy, then I'm okay with it. Type thing. So I don't know. I mean, it's it's a very it's a very interesting story. For no, sure. it is. And and like you're saying, it, it personally it bothers me because I I just have such an idealized. Uh, notion of marriage, right? And to me, if you're going to step out of your marriage, you're you're not really. In yeah, love. but I mean, in in this story, I don't think that they even thought that. I know Tony. Tony definitely believes that marriage is marriage. Yes, and that's like that's it. Yeah, but Ailish might not actually think it's that big of a deal it's very at that possible. at that point at that point in time. I was going to say it's all a matter of perspective. Yeah, because I don't feel like she stepped out of the marriage. No, they didn't have sex. She didn't kiss. They didn't even hold hands. I I thought there was going to be for sure a scene at the the wedding. Yeah, when we see a shot of where they hold hands. Yeah, I thought so too. But it never happened. No, I know it's kind of interesting too. Is when Tony and uh, Ailish were dancing Mm -hmm. uh, for the first time, or actually, uh, I guess it was kind of the second time. But like with that slow song, and they were slow dancing. That song is the same song that her and Jim were playing or uh, dancing to after the wedding. Did you guys pick that up? No, I didn't. No. Yeah, it's the exact same song. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, so I thought that was kind of interesting on, you know, it's two dances, you know, one in New York, one in Ireland, and it's like almost two parallels in a way. Like, this is exactly how it kind of was happening over in New York. Yeah. Everything was just falling on her lap or something like that. Again, the, big, the, the biggest thing, okay, had they not gotten married, the movie has no issue to me it's a perfect little romance thing two guys one girl they got to figure it out you know etc not even a problem the fact that they got married is what bugs me because well, yeah. the minute i mean and she obviously recognizes the marriage as a as being a big enough deal that she, when she goes to see rose's grave she puts the ring back on she cries right. that you know rose couldn't meet her husband etc etc yeah. it's not a flippant thing but she treats it as a semi-flippant thing whenever she starts hanging out with jim more and i absolutely hear what you and john are saying i i do it just yeah that's that bugs me Because again, for it to be, uh, I mean, I hate to say that movies are most of the time, not all the time, but they're idealized notions of what we look at in in terms of these emotions, right? You get hate, you get raw hate, you get love, you get raw love. This doesn't do that. And maybe it's a pro. I don't know. Maybe it's a pro that it doesn't do that. It just bugs me that, that it, you know, that seems to be this, um, this decision she has to make. Well, she already made the decision. She got married in New York. Yeah, you know what right. I mean, like I that, mean that you could me. you could you could tell that I you know when she at the very end when she was outed by the bitch Kelly. Yeah. Of you know, God, like that scene right there, it still irritates the balls out of me. It's yeah, just it like rough. it's like you bitch, <laughs> you're trying to blackmail me for for something that you know I'm like, yeah, of course I married you know, and she actually stands up and you know, yeah. no, I am I Alish. A- 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 Fiorello or whatever his yeah. last name is. Fiorello. Some, yeah. uh, I liked I like that Italian. scene. Well, no, I like that scene because it, it showed her actually showing up. Like she, yeah. that's when, and that's you know I what I said she think, became like an adult. But you know what's kind of interesting is I think she actually needed 
that whole span of events to happen to prove to herself Mm -hmm. that her love for Tony was that true. Possibly. Maybe. Uh, maybe the, the maybe the love or, or even to just realize herself, um, like you guys are saying, come out of her shell. I'm saying coming of age, <clears throat> similar thing, um, yeah. to realize herself being an adult. Because that's the, really the first time I think <clears throat> that she stands up to the childish notions that, that John's bringing up in terms of... Uh, the being held down or, or um, how, yeah. Cause I mean, you describe it. The, um, it's, it, it almost felt like she was being lassoed and like, she could not escape that lasso. Yeah. That yeah. she could not break free. Like, mm-hmm. so it's, it is kind of a mild case of abuse just because it's like, you're, you're not allowed to think for yourself. Yeah. You know, if, if you think for yourself, then you know what? I just kind of disown you because that's kind of what happened at the very end. And I think Ailish knew that that was going to happen. So mm-hmm. she had to kind of play along because she didn't want to come to Ireland and be like, Hey, I'm married and yeah. be like, Oh, you know what? Now I'm disowning you. Now you're, now you're just, you're on, you're on your own person now. So go away. I don't need you anymore. You talking about with the mom. Yeah. Ah, because it was a that. very, like when she said that, you know, I'm married and she was like, is he, is he a nice man? And he's like, yeah. And, and like, when are you leaving? Cause you know, you want to be back with your husband. And she's like, tomorrow. I was like, are you on the early train? She's like, yeah. And she's like, well, I guess I'm going to bed now. See, I got bye, bitch. I got a little, I agree with you on how the mom <laughs> acted, but I got a different read on why the mom was acting that way. The mom to me seemed very, um, I don't know. Maybe it's just dependency. It could just be dependency, but she seemed, um, very self-centered. That's, that's oh, the yeah. way I took it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like she was, uh, she was super excited that she was going to get to move into the house with Jim and, and, um, Ailish. Yeah. She seemed, you know, all oh, of that big house. And, you know, this came along at the perfect time for us, et cetera. Yeah. Like she everything was just these... us. And yeah, yeah. It was just like, what's good for Ailish is good for both of them. Yeah. And it's like, uh, I just, I just, well, hate she that. reminded me of somebody that's in my family that like, even when, when she was on the phone with her mom, when, yeah. when Ailish was still in, um, New York, in New York, yeah. Uh, she was like, you know, your sister's gone and you're gone now. I'm the only one left. You know, I don't have oh, anybody man. here. The guilt, the guilt, guilt trip that she Woo. was throwing on her. Yeah. yeah. Like, that's just Catholic guilt trip. Oh right man. That's what just, study. just any mother guilt trip, man. It's like, okay, fine. You know, I, I love you mom. You know, just, okay, let's just get through this. That's why I'm saying the dependency thing too, though. Right. I mean, it could just be that because she doesn't have a husband and she's too old to remarry probably by some Irish you know, 1950s law, um, <laughs> right? Who knows what the laws were back then? Yeah, she uh, she seems to be you know relying on her daughters to to do something, or maybe not um, just laws, but the talk, the yeah, talk of the that, town. That's what I mean. Yeah, you'll, be, some, you'll be ousted by the, the social town. laws, unspoken yeah. law, and that's yeah. what that's what she loved getting away from is is uh, I think it was like one of the last scenes where she was going back to America, and she she saw that um, where the other Irish girl was like, oh, is you know I'm going to Brooklyn is. Is it everything that they say it is? And it's like, yeah. And then it's basically, oh, no, it wasn't that scene. It was the very beginning where, uh, no, it was this scene where she was talking, saying, like, if uh, you talk to somebody, they don't know your aunt. <laughs> yeah. You know, nobody knows you. And that's the perfect thing. Is Although because, Ailish figured out that wasn't true with the, no, with the marriage. Right? Thing. Yeah. Oh, man. And that's what, that's what I broke knew, the, cam- I, the, the camel's back. I knew that was going to happen, though. As soon as... Uh, he was like, "Oh, I've got you know my wife's cousin lives." I was like, oh, uh, "That's gonna get right back to them that mm, she's married." Yep. I thought that it would break a little earlier, but I knew it was gonna happen. Yeah. So, quick question: um, Do we ever find out why her sister passes away? Heart disease. It's like a heart condition, I think. Okay. Did they say that in the movie? Uh, uh, I don't. I'm I wanting, missed to, it too. I'm wanting yeah, to say I they it did, but they said something about her heart. She yeah. knew she had a heart problem. She didn't say anything. Okay. Cause I was yeah. gonna say, apparently in the book it was, it's defined as a pre existing heart condition. Yeah. I but think I don't I, think it's mentioned in the movie, but it I'm might wanna, be. I want to say it, it was, but it was very, very brief. I yeah. thought it was flood that said something about it was her heart or they knew it was, they knew about her heart or something like oh, that. Oh yeah. Okay. Or nobody, was, nobody knew about her heart. I think is the way he puts it. Oh, that's right. And then, then he, he follows up with, uh, she didn't tell anybody. She didn't tell anybody. Yeah. Right. Not that's even the, right. not even the girls in her golf club knew, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Um, so I was just looking through some trivia stuff here and yeah. uh, found a couple of things just to um, to get back to the not to get back to the contentious uh, <laughs> discussion we have, but I found this interesting yeah. based off that. Uh, this is here: the relationship between Alis Alish and uh, Jim remains purely platonic in the film. However, in the book, Alish and Jim actually have an affair of sorts. 
Yeah. And this causes Ailish to question her marriage and to leave her husband's letters unopened because she isn't sure she wants to go back to him. And it's not until the news of her behavior reaches New York through Miss Kelly's contacts that she finally decides to go back. Mm. So that totally changes. Kind of does, doesn't it? Yeah. So when they, in the book, by the way, does it say how uh, how it ended? I'm just curious. John, it does did you not. Look this up? I didn't look it up, no. no. It, it did. I do see it here that the ending of the movie is different from the book but they don't specify how gotcha. mm. yeah i wonder if she actually stayed in ireland or something no i think she does go back to to new york in the book but um <clears throat> i don't know I, I like i said i didn't look it up i'm just curious if uh if tony found out about it how does how did that go down you know what i mean was it like a episode of honeymooners or <laughs> you know, like Bang, to the moon, boom. Eilish. Yeah, yeah, to the moon. <laughs> well, and and I think it needed it to be quite honest. I think I think the film needed a little more at 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 the end. Yeah. Um. Because I I I didn't really enjoy the the quick wrap up. Happy, happy yeah. Ever ever. You know? It was pretty quick. Um. I wished, and I in in the the pacing though I I liked the pacing. So did I, I. I I kind of wish though that the film had amped up a bit when she was more happy, and then. Like that way, they could completely put the brakes on it whenever she got back to Ireland. Oh, I see. What you know, saying, where yeah. it would just like like this, maybe the like the the atmosphere would be more busy. The yeah, like, like montage almost, like right, a, well, like a quick, quick yeah, kind of like the, like, stuff, like there yeah. would be more people on the street. She would be going. She she would be around more people. M- many things were happening. Maybe the film would brighten a little bit. Yeah, you know, into where when she gets when when she lands in Ireland, it just just halts and goes right back to this bland slow yeah yeah movie i, I think, think it, that, i think it, that would hit more emotions it that way kind of did on that aspect because when she was at coney island that's when the all of the colors popped because they were eating cotton candy everything was mm-hmm. bright and like that was like the happiest point in her life i think mm-hmm. or at, le- at least to that point it's when she brings out the the irish emerald green dress yeah which i thought was um pretty cool but yeah yeah the I, I know what you're saying i i know what john's trying to point out though he's saying like um like fast cuts like uh yeah. you know she's she's hurrying down the the street you know on her way to bertocci's then it goes inside and she's inside the department store then it snaps and she's on her way back or on the way to the you know whatever just fast cuts showing yeah. that her life is picked up and when uh, i get what you're saying there i think that that would have made it more interesting i almost i think that they were trying to maintain the tone as much as possible mm-hmm. um I, I i don't know it's one of the better dramas i've seen probably in the last six months um drama <clears throat> in particular is such a dangerous uh genre you know you can easily end up in the remains of the day if you're not careful and it's just you know that's just hellish hellish territory to be in yeah so i mean i think uh overall i think they played it pretty well and it, it had nice nice moments of levity without being a comedy hmm you yeah, there were some mean? funny parts to There's it. There's some funny parts, but yeah. it would, but it's not something that I would go, oh, you want to see a good comedy? <laughs> right. It's, right. Yeah, it's definitely not a comedy. <laughs> no, no, it's but definitely that, not a comedy. But, but that, uh, what was her uh, fiancé husband's name? Tony. 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 Tony's little brother was hilarious. Oh, oh yeah, he was. He's one, of, he's one of my favorite characters. That kid that. was great. Yeah, Sorry, Elish, you, I'm an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> that, again, that's probably one of my <laughs> other favorite scenes when they're just eating dinner with the family and the, the italian family you don't like the irish oh yeah <laughs> he's like whoa hey stop when he Hang says on. he says uh sorry Alish, i'm a, i was a rude he says i'm an idiot and then gets he's hit like, in the head I'm he's a like rude a rude idiot, idiot. <laughs> yeah. yeah he reminded me of you john i thought that he was like you he actually reminded yeah. me of you eddie uh, i can see that too <laughs> yeah because he was just like you know ever ever since you know the the baseball thing kind of threw me for a loop in a way because he thought tony always thought that Ailish was a, a Yankees fan, but she just didn't want him to talk about baseball just because of what the shop owner, of uh, the right. uh, uh, the makeup place in Brooklyn. What is that place called? It's like Barocci's or something. Yeah, Barocci's or. See, but, I got I got a slightly different Bertocci's read on that. Or, no, because she was you know the shop owner or the manager or something like that, and she was like, "Oh, as an Italian boy, don't." I can't give that advice to anybody new coming here because it's like, "Oh, you're all happy and everything." Yeah, but. And she was like, well, does he talk about his mother all the time? And does he talk about baseball all the time? And she's like, no, he hadn't mentioned either. And she's like, well, keep him. Yeah. And then yeah. when she finds out at dinner, she he's this huge Brooklyn Dodgers fan. She's like, oh, shit. <laughs> he's really into baseball. Like, am I falling for uh, an Italian that's just typical? Like, it's going to talk about his mom all the time or talk about baseball all the time? And then when she 
got mad about that or she was uneasy about it, you know, when, and the little kid was like, uh-oh, she might be a Yankees fan. You know, it just, that's not her, I mean, Tony was like, oh, crap, you know, are you, are you, a, are you a Yankees fan? <laughs> you know, it's like, <laughs> like it was really bugging him that it was, it was, I uh, you don't know, when, she, when he brought up baseball, she was like, just, just stop. And he's like, you know, just, just don't be a Yankees fan. <laughs> we don't like the Yankees. Mm. Yeah, that the whole scene was pretty funny, and it actually made me want to go eat spaghetti. Um, right. So another thing that I thought kind of interesting, I didn't know this, but Alish is uh, basically the Irish language translation of Elizabeth. Yeah. yeah. Did yeah. you know that? that? Too, yeah. Mm. So Elizabeth is Alish. So um, yeah. So anyway, um, any other thoughts about the movie? Anything else interesting? It was kind of, I don't know. I couldn't really connect with it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you, you, I, I know, like at the very beginning of this, you're like, ah, I just don't like romances. You yeah, know, so that's that's fine. I mean, not, it's not everybody's niche that you know they like romances. I mean, she doesn't meet up with Tony until about 55 minutes into the movie, right? And yeah, then it, was, it just seemed you, know, you guys were talking about how you like the pace. I I didn't. I, I thought it was just slow. Um, See, I, I really, I liked it up until, up until she leaves for Ireland again. I liked it. I was like, oh, this is a really good movie. Once she left for Ireland and then landed and the gym thing, I was like, eh, I'm out. Yeah. I'm out at that point. I well, mean, don't get me wrong. You know, it's two countries, two hearts or, or two loves, one heart. You know, it's like, you gotta, it's gotta, it's a battle of the fittest. I'm, I'm quickly learning my heart works differently than everyone else's. <laughs> I, I don't think noticing. she loved Ireland. No, I really don't. I mean, no. the, it, she she wasn't the quintessential. Um, I left home and now I yearn to be back there. The only thing that I think that she loved about Ireland was the the simplicity of it all. I thought it was her, just her sister. Well, I think she she really did like the the simple life of everything. Everything mm-hmm. is just so simple and elegant, and you know that's what she loves about Ireland. But the people in her town, fuck them, get rid of them. I don't right. care. It's like that I can leave that, but going back to the beaches, which that beach that was in that scene was also uh, Saving Private, Private Ryan. Ryan. Yeah. It was the D Day scene, which was kind of interesting. Um, but yeah, that scene in particular, she was standing on top of the hill. I'm like, man, this is a beautiful country, but you know, the people here suck. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So the budget for this movie. What do y'all think about the budget on this? This is also in and, dollars, so okay. It, it feels low budget. Yeah, it was me. an independent film. Yeah, because this was a Fox Searchlight. So Actually, it was. Well, it was. Yeah, it was purchased by Fox. Yeah. The distribution rights were purchased like by nine million dollars. Yeah. Which they, like that. that that's that's a subsidiary that they only purchase independent movies. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, uh, fifteen million. Fifteen. It's twelve. Okay. Twelve. I'm probably over. Okay. I'm gonna say twenty. Twenty. John was almost right on it. It's it's eleven million dollars. Oh wow! That they made this movie on. Um, opening weekend, not that great. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> uh, yeah. Since it's an independent movie, Fox Searchlight, five million. Okay. Million? Oh wait, no. Sorry, I meant to say <laughs> like fifty thousand. <000. laughs> okay, that's what I meant to say. There you go. Just yeah, just minus like, a zero. Okay. Yeah. It's like wait a minute. Mm, I'll, I'll seventy five thousand. Seventy five. I'm gonna go above that eighty. Eighty. Oh, it's one hundred eighty seven thousand yeah. dollars. Huh. Yeah. And you know, it's kind of interesting how this movie made the uh, the best picture nomination in the Oscars, but yeah, did not win any or did not get nominated. Oh no, it didn't get uh, it didn't get any other wins. Didn't right. get any wins. It got nominated for like best uh, actress, which is Saoirse. Um, but yeah, it. That and along with The Martian. The Martian and that and, and Brooklyn were the only two movies that did not get any wins during the Oscars. Right. But, di- but did get nominated for Best Picture. So that was kind of interesting. The, 2015 was a very... It was a weird it, Academy it, Awards it year. It was a good year for movies, I, I'd say. It had uh, um, Ex Machina or oh, yeah, whatever. Ex Machina, yeah. Machina. Yeah, that's out. a great movie. Uh, Mad Max. Yeah, came Mad out. Max Fury Road's a great movie. So I mean, they were competing against that, and like the visually stunning movie of, the, of that is. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, gross USA. So gross money back. That number. Uh, if anybody has an idea, jump in. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. I'll say three million. Three. 
I'll, I'll go back with my original five million. <laughs> okay, five million. I'm say eight. All right, thirty-eight point three million. Oh, we all really? overshot. Yeah, wow. mainly because of the best picture nomination. Oh, oh yeah, that's yeah, true. Right. About that. yeah. So once it once movies make that best picture nomination, it's like okay, you're on fast track to make money. Yeah. Because you're you're already already going to be you know out there in front of people and people are going to watch it and all that kind of crap. So. So yeah. Um, interesting. Well, let's talk about what the Rotten Tomatoes thought of it. Um, let, let's let's start with the audience first. I already looked at these, so I'm. But a... oh, you already looked. <laughs> well, damn you! Kyle. Sorry, I was just I was curious. I couldn't handle myself. Well, what do you guys think the audience scored? Uh, what is this movie? Let's Brooklyn. <laughs> I would think the audience would have given this a. 65. I'm going to go higher. 85. 87. Nice. Pretty close. Yeah. And what about the critic score? Uh, it's 93. Okay. Mm, I'm going to say 91. 97. Oh, uh, nice. So pretty high score on the critics rating on the mm-hmm. scale. Yeah. Hence the best picture nomination, I'm sure. Yeah. You got it there. Makes sense. Yep. So go ahead, Kyle. What do you... Uh, what do you want to score this? Oh yeah, so um, I mean, I I I really like this movie. Um, it's it's one of the romances I can kind of get through, and it always uh, there are certain parts that really kill me, especially the uh, the veteran. No, the the Irish uh, homeless guys that come in. That mm. oh yeah, where they sing uh, what's it called Frankie's song or something? Yeah, something like that. It, it tears me up all the time. Like these poor bastards you know they came over here and basically gave their lives to <laughs> building things and then they're like eh, we don't need you anymore and i read the uh i read the the i don't know if that's gaelic what was he yes gaelic to english translation yeah and um it doesn't have the same ring no to it it sounds all. so much prettier yeah. in gaelic than in english but you know there yeah there's, there's some scenes like that that just kind of tear my heartstrings a little bit um but overall i mean i i would definitely rate this like an 8.3 it's a fair score okay mm-hmm. 8.3 yep. um well for me like i said that i find these kind of movies like very difficult to connect with um you need yourself a woman i guess hey everybody uh, justin's single get out there and <laughs> yeah <laughs> i mean i'm not very close to my family so all that stuff didn't connect you're right i don't yeah, like you said, I'm not seeing anybody right now, so that stuff didn't connect. <laughs> Just you have no love triangles going on. No, nope. from between two countries. Nope, and I'm glad. <laughs> I'm very, I very am glad. Too, actually, that'd be really difficult to do, um, to say the least. Yeah, so it so it's it's tough because I can. I can kind of see how this has potential to be a good movie. It's just it, it just didn't connect with me. So I'm gonna go with like something that's like run of the mill because that's what it felt like to me. Ouch. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna go with like a five. Okay. Um, overall, I thought the movie was was good. Um, I enjoyed the filmmaking. I enjoyed the pacing. I just I wish it would have have amp- ramped up and ramped back down and at at, at certain points. Um, I appreciate the fact that it's set in the 1950s and it feels like a 1950s movie, unlike uh, what was that Angel Heart yeah. made in the 80s for, for the 50s and it did not feel like a 50s movie <laughs> whatsoever. It was very confused. Felt like the 80s right. still. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I didn't enjoy the the quick wrap up. I wish that would have been a little longer and and see we we saw we actually saw her coming back and the conversation between her and her husband and and all that yeah, like stuff a nice and how that worked out. Yeah. 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 Right. And um, what did Ebert say about it? He was dead. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. He died in 2013. Yeah, he passed away. In... This was 2015. So. You never know. Maybe he wrote it post- posthumously. No, it was actually a, a guy. Uh, there, there, I did. I did go to to his the Roger Ebert dot com. I believe it is. I don't oh, know. Okay. I, always, I always Google it. I don't. I don't know. Is there like answer. other people that are like kind of yeah, taking over? Yeah, they're they're on there and 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 Glenn Ke- Glenn Kenny actually gave it four stars. Um, out of five, yeah. On on a on on their website, and he did a review, but not an actual review. Mm-hmm. It was more of just a synopsis, like just and a like, regurgitation. Like, hey, this is great. This is a, it's a great film. You know, just kind of you know really really talked it talked it up without any criticism whatsoever. Yeah. 
Um, but um, based on all that, I think my score is going to be a 7.5. Okay. Um, so I like the movie uh, up until, like I said, up until she left for Ireland. Um, I question the, the I, it's a romance. Yeah. I'm not questioning calling it a romance per se. I'm questioning the idea of what kind of, what's the notion of romance that they're pushing. Love film. Sure. You know <laughs> what I mean? It, it didn't feel that way to me after she left back for Ireland. Definition of romance. Sure. <laughs> um, overall, I would say that, uh, I, I like the coloring. I like the cinematography. I like the, uh, the overall feel that they were able to build. I, um, I feel the same way John did. You know, it felt like a 1950s era movie, like you were kind of getting a glimpse, which was nice. Um, I didn't, I didn't mind the pacing to be honest. Like, I, I like the pacing. I like that it, uh, it didn't feel like it was droning for being a drama. Which, again, that's one thing I just can't stand about dramas is that sometimes they start to, uh, they get wrapped up in their own bullshit. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say that this was probably a six point eight for me. It was right. definitely not a not, definitely not a bad movie. I would I would suggest it to somebody. Hmm. Cool. Yeah. So with that, then that means that Brooklyn from 2015, the romance movie, gets a 6.9 average. Okay. Which uh, I think that puts it in like third place. Yeah, something, something like, like that. that. Yeah. Nice. So okay. Good so, choice, by the way, Kyle. Thanks. No um. Worries. Yeah, it's only brought down from my crappy score, <laughs> which I have a feeling any romance movie, unless it's uh. Um, obfuscated through some other weird random yeah. o- action movie or something. Well, like <laughs> an, an action romance. I, I don't, yeah, I have no idea. <laughs> True lies. I don't know. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> you get to see a lot of Jamie Lee Curtis in that movie, right? So, yeah. right. Yeah. That's love. That's a love film for sure. <laughs> Would not be opposed to that being on someone's list. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. So the three hosts left are myself, Eddie, and John. So we have to roll to see who's going to be picking the next movie. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. And that would be me. John. Okay, so John. And then we have what left? We have sci-fi, western, and war. And war. Okay. Yeah, somehow this came out perfect, even though we didn't plan it to come out perfectly like that. Like with yeah. the wild card, it right. came out to exactly right, even exactly, amount. Yeah. It's really yeah. strange how that worked, but no. All right, here we go. And it's war. War. <laughs> What is it? Yeah. Okay, let me so get to John, my war films. Your, your war films. Well, I've got two on my list, and I think you know which one I'm going to pick. I don't. Patton? <laughs> Patton. Yeah. Oh, man. Patton, 1970. Get ready for a long film, yeah, for a four-hour movie. <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> Woo! You might need to stretch this over two days. <laughs> <laughs> Do you need a synopsis? <laughs> Patton, sure, give here, us a synopsis. Let me, let me see if I can figure it out. Patton kicks ass. Pretty much it. That That's way overhyped. That's, that's, yeah. all, that's all you it, need to know. It's uh, the World War II <laughs> phase of the career of controversial American General George S. Patton. Nice. That's actually a really good movie. I'm, I'm yeah. excited to watch what, it again. What year was that again? 1970. It's 1970. Okay. Very cool. All right, so, yep. For the listeners out there, the next movie is going to be the four-hour epic Patton. <laughs> Hell yeah! <laughs> from 1970. Just glad it wasn't me. <laughs> yeah. So uh, if you don't have it, go check it out. You can go look at the realgood.com. That's R-E-E-L good.com. You can see where it's streaming, where to rent it, purchase it, and whatnot. Uh, if you're enjoying the podcast, uh, go ahead and make sure you go to Apple Podcasts and uh, like us and subscribe and Go ahead and leave us a comment and whatnot and tell us what we do crappy Lee and what we do good Lee. Lee. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So thanks for listening. Sp- speaking is going to be on that list, yes, I think. Yeah, yeah, probably. Me no speak good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bye. See you guys. See you. Later.